Earth is a complex system composed of four main components, or spheres. The geosphere, solid Earth. Hydrosphere, water. Atmosphere, air. And biosphere, life. Each of these spheres interact with each other, influencing Earth's climate, landforms, and life forms. The hydrosphere includes all the water on, above, and below the surface of the Earth. This encompasses oceans, which make up the majority of the hydrosphere, as well as rivers, lakes, groundwater, ice, and even the water vapour in the atmosphere. The hydrosphere interacts extensively with the other spheres. For example, it interacts with the geosphere in processes such as erosion and deposition which can create or alter landforms over time. Similarly, ocean currents, a component of the hydrosphere, can impact the geosphere by distributing heat across the planet, influencing the climate. The hydrosphere also interacts with the atmosphere through the water cycle, where water evaporates, condenses in the atmosphere, and then precipitates back to the Earth's surface. This process helps to regulate Earth's temperature and plays a crucial role in weather patterns. Perhaps the most significant interaction with the Earth's hydrosphere is with the biosphere. The hydrosphere provides the entire biosphere with the essential component for life, water. Plants need water to photosynthesize. and all organisms require water to survive. In many cases, the hydrosphere provides the primary habitat for many organisms, with bodies of water like streams, rivers, lakes, and the ocean. The Earth's hydrosphere, while mainly about Earth's water, is interwoven with the geosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere, and changes in the hydrosphere can cause significant impacts across these other spheres. Hydrosphere In our previous session, we learnt about what exactly is our environment all about where we study the various components of our environment and also the four spheres. Friends, do you know something? If you view our planet Earth from the space, it looks blue as major part of the Earth's surface is covered with water. And this is the reason why Earth is known as water planet or blue planet. And this abundance of water is what distinguishes Earth from other planets of our solar system. Let's know some more things about this interesting feature of our Earth, that is our hydrosphere. We all know, all the water on the surface, below the ground and surrounding the Earth comes under hydrosphere. We can also see water in different forms like in rivers, seas, oceans, snow, rain, glaciers, ice caps, etc. Here, if we observe, water is present in solid form in glaciers, snow and ice caps, whereas it exists in liquid form in rivers, seas, oceans and rainfall. Now, can water be present in glacier state? Friends, we all have seen the steam coming out from the boiling water. This steam is water in its gaseous state. So we can say 
Water exists in all three states of matter solid, liquid and gas. Now if we look at the distribution of water in different forms on our earth, 71% of our earth is covered with water and the remaining 29% is land and around 97% of this water is in seas and oceans and so we call this water as marine water or saline water as it has more amount of dissolved salts and so it's not fit for drinking and the remaining 3% is fresh water here we call it as fresh water because the dissolved salt content is very less and that is the reason why it is fit for drinking and of the total fresh water major part is locked in glaciers and ice caps followed by underground water and just a small amount is located in rivers and lakes so we can compare this small portion of water which is available for drinking with the total water available on the earth and this is the reason why we must put efforts in conserving water here i remember the lines from the rhymes of ancient marina water water everywhere but not a drop to drink it stands true completely in case of a planet earth as we have seen just now that a vast majority of our earth's surface is covered by water but only a small portion of it is fit for drinking water plays a crucial role in survival of living organisms on earth where there is water there is life it is not just the earth that is majorly covered with water but do you know water makes up approximately 70% of human's body weight an average person could live without food for nearly a month but it would just be difficult for us to survive even for a week without water that's how important water is to human life now let's move ahead and look how water acts as a resource to us we call water as an important resource as we use it for various purposes and we can divide this into three different uses like agricultural use domestic use and industrial use we all know that crops require water for their growth and we provide this water to our fields by proper irrigation facilities talking about the domestic use it simply implies water which is required for household purposes like drinking washing cooking watering plants etc this water reaches to our homes through various distribution systems and talking about industries they require a huge amount of water at various levels of operations friends we saw here that water has many different uses but does all this water get exhausted as we use it if that is the case then how is this percentage of water on the earth maintained water is replenished or recycled through a natural process which is called water cycle which we will be studying in our coming session so to know more details about